Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's apply what we've learned so far. We're going to find the what we call the S domain equivalent of an inductor. We know that in the time domain, the reactance of an inductor is equal to 2 pi FL, or can also be written as omega L, omega being the radial frequency of the circuit of the current and the voltage of the circuit, and L of course being the inductance of the inductor. If we have a current I going through the inductor and the voltage V across the inductor, we can then say that the voltage across the inductor as a function of time can be written as L times di dt. What we're going to do now is find the Laplace transform of that function. We're going to find V of s. V of s is equal to question mark. So we're going to find the frequency domain of the voltage across the inductor. Since we have V of t equals as L times di dt, and if we let the current equal the sine of omega t, let's find out what, what V of t then would be. So V of t would be equal to L times the derivative with respect to time of the sine of omega t, which is equal to the derivative of the sine is the cosine, and so this would be L times the cosine of omega t, times the derivative of the angle, which is equal to omega L times the cosine of omega t. We then realize that the Laplace transform then would be V as a function of S is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times the function of times dt. And of course, the function in this case would be V of t. So maybe instead of writing f, I can simply write V of t, so you can see that is the function we're talking about the voltage across the inductor. And we know what that is equal to, so we can write this as the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times omega L cosine of omega t dt. And of course, omega and L are constants. We can take those outside the integral sign, so this becomes equal to omega L times integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times the cosine of omega t dt. Now in the previous videos, we've seen how to find the integral of that. Now that was, once we know how to do that, all we have to do is remember that the solution to this equation can be found simply by saying the Laplacian of the cosine of omega t is simply equal to that. Which means, instead of going through all that work, we simply replace that integral by that quantity right there. So we can say that this is equal to omega times L times the quantity S divided by S squared plus omega squared. And so therefore we can say that the voltage across S, the voltage, I should say the voltage across the inductor in the frequency domain can be written as s omega l divided by s squared plus omega squared. Now we can do the same for the current. Since the current is written as that, we can then say that the current i in the frequency domain is simply equal to the integral of e to the minus st from 0 to infinity of the current i of t dt. And of course the current i of t, we already know what that is, we said it was equal to sine of omega t, so this can be said to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times the sine of omega t times dt. And again, we've done that integral before in the previous video, we know that the solution to that integral is equal to what we have up there. The, Lap the Laplace transform of the sine of omega t is equal to that, which means that this cannot be written as omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. Now, remember that via Ohm's law, that the current I is equal to V divided by the reactance in the case of an inductor. Or, if I want to solve this for the reactants, I can say that the reactants x is equal to V over I. And since we're now in the 
frequency domain, not in the time domain. Let's use the equation for V and I that, I, that we just found. And maybe I'll just go ahead and write it like this. This is equal to I as S and put a box around it. There we go. So we have the voltage across the inductor in the frequency domain. We have the current across the inductor, or I should say through the inductor, in the frequency domain. What if we now take V divided by I and see what we get? So remember that in the time domain, X of L can be written as omega times L. What do you think it will be in the frequency domain? Well, let's find out. So in this case, we have S omega L divided by S squared plus omega squared, and we divide that by I, which can be written as omega, divided by S squared plus omega squared. Notice that we have for the numerator and the denominator, in both cases, S squared plus omega squared in the denominator, so that cancels out. So this leaves us with S omega L over omega, and of course, omegas cancel out, which is equal to S times L. In other words, the reactance of an inductor in the frequency domain, and maybe I'll write it as, as a function of S, is equal to S times L. And notice how similar that looks to the equation we got for the inductor, for the reactance of the inductor in the frequency domain. There it was omega times L, and in the I should say the time domain, this is in the time domain, and in the frequency domain, we got X of L equals S times L. So there you can see the relationship between the reactance of an inductor in the time domain versus the reactance of an inductor in the frequency domain. And again, we have accomplished that by using the Laplace transform, and that's how it's done.